Mecánica. Welcome to Tea Talk, a special panel discussion hosted by the Women's Committee of the St. Lucia Teachers Union in celebration of International Women's Day, which will be on March 8th. The theme for this year's International Women's Day is Gender Equality Today for a Sustainable Tomorrow. To start off our first ever Tea Talk, we have invited three very confident accomplished and dynamic women to chit chat with us. So first we have Dr. Rosemary Mafre, husband's Mafre, my past teacher whom I adore. She <laughs> served as Speaker of the House and presently she is the Parliamentary Commissioner for Public Sector Administration. Welcome. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Glad to be here. Honored to be here. Thank you very much. Great. And then we have Mrs. Joycelyn Eugene who is the coordinator of school counseling. Welcome, Mrs. Eugene. Thank you. Happy to be here. Great. And then we have our very own Miss Tracy Dolsey. She is the treasurer of the Women's Committee. She is also, she was a teacher. Um, I think now she's assigned to the Ministry of, help me out there. Education. Ministry of Education. So welcome, Tracy. Thank you. Okay. So ladies, it is such a pleasure to have you today as we begin our Women's Day celebrations. Are you ready to sip on your tea from Enchanted Kettle? Mm, yes. And have a chit chat. <laughs> great, great. So, you know the topic for today. Are men really the head and should women submit? But to start off, I'm going to read a scripture verse. So it's taken from Ephesians 5, verse 22 to 24. And it reads, Wives, submit yourselves to your own husbands as you do to the Lord. For the husband is the head of the wife, as Christ is the head of the church, his body of which he is the Savior. Now as the church submits to Christ, so also wives should submit to their husbands in everything. Should submit to their husbands in everything. I didn't say it, <laughs> Ephesians said it. Now, according to the Oxford Dictionary, Submission is defined as accepting or yielding to a superior force or to the will or authority of another person. Now, my first question is, does submit means know your place? Well, if you look at it in the earthly sense of it, as in the, the regular definition or layman's perspective on submissive would be know your place. I think, so, I think you began in the middle of the sentence. Joyce <laughs> 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 it has a, a Bible um, that gives the context in which um, we, we, talk, we talk about wives must submit to their husbands. Mm -hmm. I want Joyce <laughs> to say the verses that went before so that we can have a good discussion <laughs> of where the context of that submission comes. Joyce Lee. Okay, well, let's say. Well, <laughs> I think um, we generally miss verse 21, which says, submitting to one another mm -hmm. in the fear of Christ. 21 brings us mutual submission, mm -hmm. which then uh, causes the rest of the verses to fall into line. Okay? And then, if we're looking at the scripture perspective, we're talking about in Christ. This is specific to a relationship for those Christian believers who are married, which is the other context, wives, submit to your husbands. own husbands. Own husbands. It says own husbands. Mm -hmm. You're not submitting to any <laughs> other man or any other person's oh. husband, uh -huh. your own husband. So but in that sense, mm -hmm. it creates a context. However, if we take submit by itself and the definition that you use, mm -hmm. then we could see conflict. But wait, just wait a second. Let me get that. But verse 21 said, submit to one another. Submit one to another. Effect. Yes. But mm -hmm. then to me, the other verses overpower 
they overpower it. The, the other verses that follow. So why did it not mention submit to each other again? But it specifically says, wives, submit yourselves to your husband. Why didn't it say, husband, you in turn submit to your wife? It, um, I think one of, one of it is that the that we we all teachers at least, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and there was the main idea. The main, <laughs> the main idea. idea. The first sentence. <laughs> yes. And, and we know that the supporting details are important. <laughs> right. Right. But let's understand the main idea, which speaks to a mutual relationship in Christ. Mm -hmm. It's not a question of man to woman, and anyway, in every organization, anyway. man is the head and the woman is the servant. No, 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 no. Let's think about the context in which that was written, a mutual, love-giving, life-giving relationship. And in that mutual relationship, we go on further to hear the details. Because if, like in any organizations, you have an organization, you have an organizational structure. Yes. Mm -hmm. And in that organizational structure, there is someone to lead. And when we're talking about that leadership in Christ, we're talking about a sort of a spiritual head. We're talking about the, the, the uh, 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 relationship of a man and a woman, mutual relationship, mutual cooperation, because if there is no mutual, it's man pulling here, mm -hmm. woman pulling there, disaster, cooper, you know, fight, um, etc. If we take just submit, uh huh, by itself, you yeah. by itself. No, so, you, so are you, you going to, you expect me that I will just submit to you just so? No. no. But Let's, let me just ask her before so, you go on, Tracy. So, so are you saying that a lot of people, I don't want to say man or woman, people misunderstand no. the scripture and mm -hmm. because of that, women allow themselves to be abused yes, and men abuse them? I believe there is a misunderstanding of the scripture because again, you cannot take the verse by itself. If you, uh, if you take this verse mm -hmm. and you accept it for what it is, you accept Genesis 1, in, you accept from Genesis where it says, for this reason, a man shall leave, leave his, his mother and mm -hmm. father and cleave. Mm -hmm onto his wife. You cleave onto someone you want to be with because you all have a mutual, mutual interest, interest exactly. in building family, building community, building society, building nation. When you enter into a business agreement, you do not enter into business with people you don't agree with. You okay. enter into business and you mutually agree to the strengths okay. and weaknesses of what we have and we pull that together so our business can be successful. Okay. Therefore, this context is the success of a marriage no. between Two mutually submissive. And let me just say something about the question you asked earlier. When you look down, what it does is actually show you what submission looks like. So submission looks this way for the man as head, mm -hmm. and it looks this way for the wife who is in the relationship with him. So all it does is break up the main idea and give <laughs> you all of the other contexts in which this is going to be working, and of course to help you determine how you are going to navigate if you are to agree to get into marriage. Okay. Absolutely. Jesse? Now, I'm happy Jesse? that Miss Eugene actually, I'm um, Joycelyn touched on something, which is submission just being beyond even the marriage. Mm -hmm. And it's not just a, Chris, a Christian um, perspective. Even, for instance, when you go with um, Muslims, you have the women submitting to their husbands. And I would go further in a business partnership. I think the, the whole idea of submission is, does that person deserve my respect? If you have somebody who deserves your respect, you submit whether you realize it or not. It's a natural thing within to work, to work, mm -hmm. together, to work that together that one must compromise to an extent. And the compromise, again, there's a difference between bending or compromising and abuse. Abuse is when you, one is given more. Compromise himself, there's, there's, mm -hmm. there's a force. Yeah. There's a whole um, power struggle. Okay. But within a marriage or within a relationship, because we know there are civil partnerships, yes. okay? within the context of a relationship, mm -hmm. there's always that measure of one has to give in order for one to gain. And is there an extent? When you start measuring it is when the issues happen. Yes. Okay. Yes. yes. But yes. Um, are there specific yes. qualities that a man should have to be to be considered the head because I mean I know we spoke about Mrs. Eugenie spoke about having mutual values mm -hmm. or you know share the same beliefs mm -hmm. but sometimes you get into a union and I am specifically not saying a marriage because mm -hmm. I know you yes. said that relates to marriages marriage, marriage. but I feel when, once you have a union a solid union there should the same principle the, should the hold. principle applies but the mm -hmm. text you use speaks to yes. marriage we cannot move be we, we cannot deviate from that 
the text specifically says wives and husbands, mm -hmm. and it speaks within a context. But the principle of submission, the principle of relationship, can be extended to anyone that you come into contact with. Okay. You and I are driving down, down the road. Mm -hmm. I'm, I meet the intersection. One of us must yield. Mm -hmm. That is submission. Mm -hmm. If neither of us want to yield, um, I have right of way, mm -hmm. you mm -hmm. have right of way, we're going to end up somewhere right away. But yeah. is there yeah. any point, at any point, a woman should say, I am taking charge and I am becoming that head? She wouldn't need to. Exactly. If there's an understanding of what. But you the, see, you is. have people being married for 20 years and the marriage fails. It breaks. It doesn't break at the end of the 20 years, you know. Yeah. It breaks way before that. Mm -hmm. And then what happens? The woman keeps suffering because she's saying, this is my head. This is my head. And the woman keeps suffering. So I want women to understand clearly what we're saying when we say the man is the head. Are we telling women that we should just be there? And okay, because we share similar values, similar ideas that I should just accept certain things even when it's not right. Because I remember speaking to somebody and she's saying that if my husband and I are having a, a, a discussion or an argument and we come, it's deadlock. We cannot decide if it's black, if it's white. I go with the husband. If, if we cannot decide if it's black, if it's white, we agree to disagree. We agree to go with one. And but how but would we're, you agree? But we're Who, supporting the outcome. So you how see? will you decide which one it, you go with? That is the thing. The yielding must come mutually. So I can agree this time, you know what, baby, let's go with your... Because we, when you have children, that is another thing. And I, if, I, if I give the example, we have... Um, I ha my, my husband and I, we have a son. To my mind, I said he's going to... I think we should send him to this school. My husband said, we think we should send him to this school. And we came down to a deadlock in terms of, again, principles of our Christian belief and so on and so forth. And then we said, okay, you know what? Can we meet in the middle? Where is the middle? Where does he want to go? <laughs> okay. But you understand? So it took it away to from. Yes, say. and it takes. It comes back to, what do we want? Are we trying to build our home, or are we trying to force our point, take up a position of control, <laughs> which can have lead to further conflict in the situation? It situation. comes to. It comes to if if the relationship is a mutual mutual relationship, mm -hmm. then there are decisions that. Um, will take because I have the stronger um, interest in that. Yes. So when it comes to schooling, yeah. my husband will say, listen, you choose the, the school. I, I want her to go to this school, but you are saying, let's go. Okay, fine. We're going with your decision. You are okay. the, you are the and like Ladies, we must really take a break right now while we sip on our tea from Enchanted, Enchanted. Kettle. <laughs> Healthy, never tasted this good. <laughs> Thank you. Break. What's in the food you're eating? Do you really even know? All the chemicals and hormones used to accelerate their growth. All the artificial flavoring, sweeteners and colors too. We consume and we don't spare a thought for the damage that they'll do. The that no, they do. think about the children. Think about the children. How will we save them? Chemicals and GMOs are not the solution. Use organic and joint. Excessive agrochemical use, additives, and genetically modified foods are harmful to health and the environment. Join the good food revolution. Grow, buy, and consume organic. A message from Rise St. Lucia and the Ministry of Sustainable Development with funding from the GEF Small Grants Program, UNDP. The good food revolution. Oi, you realize you step on my toe. Well, do something about it. Kasai, busting damn Hold on. If somebody try to cross you, Hola. and the mad things start to take you, Hola. no need for a war or violence, cause the police is there to help you. Hola. If a trouble start in this session, alright, no need for aggression. Hola. We don't want no violence in the place. Hola. 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 Control your temper, right. respect each other. Don't let no trouble escalate, cause you know better. Control your temper, respect each other. Don't, do don't let no trouble escalate, cause you know better. Control your temper. A message from Mission Boys Studio 758, Acid Creation, like and the Royal Solution. Welcome back to Tea Talk. I hope you enjoyed your tea from Enchanted <laughs> Kettle. 
Okay, so we're going right back into the discussion. Before the break, Tracy, we're going to talk about what qualities makes a man, make, sorry, what qualities would make a man the head? Well, I will not say, I would say what quality makes a man deserving of my respect. In terms of within, um, well, I am single, but I'm between two married <laughs> ladies. But I would say that for sure, in order for me to consider somebody my husband mm -hmm. who's deserving of respect, we still go back to the wood and we go back to what a man is, a provider, a protector, and a professor mm -hmm. of love. I'm looking for the free peas. <laughs> I need somebody at the end of the day who's deserving of my respect. He must be able to protect me. In terms of if a man protects me, he's not going to verbally, physically, or otherwise oh, abuse me. Right. He's going to protect me even from myself. And that's a tall call. Trust me. He's going to be able to provide, not just financially, but emotionally for our family, Support. spiritually mm -hmm. as well. Then you have, he must be able to profess love, not just for me, but to a higher being. Because if he cannot profess love to others out there and to Christ, he can't profess love to me. Now, when a man comes packaged like that with his bow <laughs> and everything on, trust me, sister, I am ready to submit. It's a trust. But the thing is that I think a lot of women misunderstand because I have a problem when I hear a man's supposed to protect me. A man is supposed to be my provider. I can do these things for myself. I and can protect exactly. myself. <laughs> I can provide for myself. I do not need a mm -hmm. man. And you find women putting themselves in all precarious but positions. Mm -hmm. yeah and accept anything because they need the free peace. And here's where I'm a promoter of equity. There are certain things that a woman will be able to do better than a guy. That is normal. There are certain things that a woman can do. The day a man is able to have a natural birth of a child, we will talk about <laughs> equality. Yeah. The day that I can lift up some of the weight some men can lift up naturally without my womb being affected, we will talk about equality. But okay. I believe in equity. But I want equity. Dr. Mafra to speak about these three Ps for me, please. No, I was just thinking that as Tracy was talking about the three Ps, protector, <laughs> provider, professor, professor of love. Professor of love. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm thinking that what, what other qualities do you need? I mean, that, that, that says it all. Now, provider doesn't mean that you're supposed to be making more, more mm -hmm. money than you. That's, mm -hmm. not the pro that's not the provision we're talking about. But you know, a lot of women think so. That's they will not be for a man who makes less money than them. And, and today, I think, in a world where mm -hmm. women have taken on a, a very advanced role, mm -hmm. we're no longer the bread makers in the home, we are the yes. rule makers and the legislators and so on. We have partnerships, relationships exactly. that cannot survive that that cannot survive the fact that a woman has a salary that has ten dollars more than yours so i'm just saying that we have to look at the relationship in christ that he's yeah, your yeah. protector he's your you know he's the one who's going to give you the the spiritual guidance the provider mm -hmm. um the profession of love because it is a love giving life giving relationship yes. in christ it is not just a man and a woman and that relationship in christ if he comes with these qualities however whoever he may be so that is that is an easy an easy opportunity hmm. for you to um quick you I, know. Say Mrs. Yeah, I know she's going to agree to the free piece let's say the free no, well, piece. i'm not i'm not even i'm not even about to do that i want okay. to say that because we have so many so many persons who misunderstand the context that what we have actually done is taken the word and we have used it as a battering ram and an abusive fo tool Mm -hmm. against the lives of people when mm -hmm. we know that that's not the intention of the word so to my mind this is where the problem is but do you think the and churches are responsible for that to i some think extent? there are levels of um delivery of the message that are responsible for that but that does not mean we do not have a choice you have a choice to be able to know what the word says to study for yourself to show yourself approved for you to have an understanding to have discourses like, like this, this where as Tracy said, she's a single woman, but you hear her profession of faith basically about what it is she's looking for. You hear married women who are telling you, I'm not in an abusive marriage. I have no difficulty submitting to my husband. I see submission as a gift. Oy. And the reason I gift him that submission is because together we mutually agree to what we would want to see as a family. However, no, putting that aside... We see a lot of abuse in society. Mm -hmm. We see mm -hmm. mothers dominating sons mm -hmm. to the point where sons are bereft of showing any kind of emotion. Okay. So then they cannot become good husbands yeah, because good they're trying to think. And then you have those who are actually trying to get 
the person who should be their wife to fill in the role that the mother did not fulfill. Yes. We have a, a, a society that has, you know, made everything, turned everything upside down on its head in a lot of ways. Mm -hmm. And so because of that, you constantly find yourself in conflict when it comes to what, what, what is the desirable relationship that you have. When you meet someone and you want to enter into a conversation with them, do you go in saying, hmm, I, when he say this, I'm going to say that. And if he say that, I'm going to <laughs> make my point. You don't do that. You want to be able to go in genuinely to have a conversation about things, see where the person's head is at, right. and see right. how we can work together towards accomplishing what we want to accomplish. And then with that, you can determine whether you want to marry. And marriage is not for everybody. Oh, no. Some I person agree. Really oh, no. Understand that. I, I now, really agree to that. Now, you know, the irony is that I like the fact that um, Miss Eugene brought uh, something up that in women taking on a more dominant quote-unquote role you have had that some men have gone into a much more submissive role I and so you have that change mm -hmm. and I, I i totally agree that we have to stand up we have to become independent but again if we are, if gender equality has to be some um some some um sorry mm -hmm. sustainable mm -hmm. in the long run mm -hmm both genders or all genders should i say <laughs> must be able to rise together because it makes no sense that today for instance we have so many women who are heading um, um government positions mm -hmm. per, um, with the private sector they're getting qualified and our males are left on the block or in bodily so you have to get from the slim pickings and expect him to step up so i see my question now you have so many women, as you say, heading organizations. How does that woman make the transition from being the head for eight hours and now you go home, Dr. Mafra, I think we have and the you have to, to submit? <laughs> What's the transition like for you? Do you forget? Not at all. <laughs> Not at all. I know my role uh, and I stay in my section when I am in my section. <laughs> for instance, there is no way I, I, I didn't have a problem transitioning from Speaker of the House to, my, to a wife. It's I didn't have a, have a transition of things. telling the legislatures order <laughs> and going home and, and taking the order and, <laughs> and being part of a relationship where my husband order. can ask me to do something and I would happily okay. um, agree with him. Okay, yes, let's go with your suggestion, etc. Because that was that's a relationship born in Christ, and that's exactly. a relationship that comes with another aspect that does not, of life and love giving, that ain't in the House of Parliament. And okay. you know what's the um, irony? Is that many men, or there are some men, when they realize, okay, you're probably somebody who's accomplished, they automatically feel, oh, that one is too high for me to climb up. Mm -hmm. And they don't because realize there are many women who are in positions of power, who are looking to be able, when I get home, to take out that hat, yes. mm -hmm. and just to be a wife, just to be a mother. And to yes. um, have somebody just because all of that, if I were to get my husband tomorrow and he's able to match <laughs> those free peas, <laughs> sister dear, yes, you I can do. expect to see some okay, Tracy will Eugene. be flying even more. <laughs> yes, yes. Mrs. But, but not, every, not all men can do that. Mm -hmm. No, not all men yeah. um, can accept. Right. But some, I was telling you, it has an impact on our, on our relationships, and you see what relationships mm -hmm. are like today. But, but Dr. Maffrey, I was telling Mrs. Eugene earlier that there are men who tell you, I do not want a wife to submit to me. Yeah, because again, there are boundaries for that context. And if they're outside of that boundary, then it does not make sense to them. We leave it at that. But what I wanted to say is that it's not even so much transitioning from head into to a wife when you get home. Mm -hmm. I'm a teacher mm -hmm. by profession. Teachers, we handle classes no matter what level when you get home yes my tone <laughs> sometimes I, when i i know about that yeah <laughs> and when i met my husband in the first few years we had an agreement that when i spoke to him the tone so we okay. had a cue for each other simply because it was not necessarily headship or leadership mm -hmm. or whatnot mm -hmm. it was because of the profession that i was in and that ability that we have as teachers to command the attention of people mm -hmm. when i spoke i spoke in a tone yes. yeah. but at the same time i'm addressing my husband and there's no we're not in that relationship therefore it means i needed to recognize it and then i needed to make the adjustment right. and that is part of submission because i could have held my own and say you know 
oh, um, I'm just telling you what I'm telling you and whatnot, and I'm not mindful of how it's affecting him, how it's impacting his integrity as a man, and that type of thing. But the environment of work is quite different to uh, environment yes. at home. Okay. Um, and for me, that was a, an, an immediate switch over. Okay. And the environment of work came with its sternness, etc. And that the environment of home came with a, a, a loving, a, yes, relaxing, a different, kind of that, a, a different kind of environment. All that the world's a stage, we according to Shakespeare. Time, huh? We are in our time. All the men and women, but very clear. Yes. <laughs> I, I, I recognize we're running out of time. I yes. want to say something. Uh -huh. Earlier you said a lot of women, they been, I want women to understand they have choice. Mm -hmm. That's important. Okay? And you need to understand the context within which you are going to make the particular choice that you are making. The scripture does not say to submit to a man who is abusive, nope. who is controlling, who is what, disrespectful. Mm -hmm. The scripture connotes that being in the Lord would cause him to have a level of humility and balance. And therefore, if your husband is leading you in a direction that goes contrary to the will of God, how do you submit? We have oh, to recognize God. that there are boundaries around the, mm -hmm. the, the marriage relationship that foster the gift of submission. Yes, thank submission. you. I think that was a good way to end. Do you agree, Dr. Manfred? I Anything so. you want to say? I think so. No, I'm quite happy to say that. Um, I liked when Tracy said, um, protection, mm -hmm. that the, the man, the, the all peace, one of the pieces, yes. protection. <laughs> and what came to mind is a certain ad, that there's an ad, wouldn't mention the name that says, got you covered, guaranteed. <laughs> <laughs> That's what the husband, That's what the husband should, should say. Do. Got you covered, guaranteed. Ladies, it's been a pleasure. I really had fun chit-chatting with you. Pretty and amazing. you have made history. This is our first ever Tea Talk, SLT Women's Committee Tea Talk. Yes. So maybe next year we can invite you again to be part of Tea Talk. Mm. I would like to say a big thank you to NTN for making this possible. And also, I would like to thank Enchanted Kettle, a local tea making company. And of course, we support local, healthy, never tasted this good, right? It was yes. nice, right? Yes, it was nice. So, thank okay. you for tuning in to our first ever Tea Talk. Stay tuned for another episode of Tea Talk, which will be released soon. Thank you. See you later. Yeah.